Okay, guys, let me just make sure that we're live here. Looks like we are, but give me one second. Okay, we are indeed. All right, so happy Monday, happy afternoon. Um, hope everybody had a good weekend. And today I want to talk about uh, ways in which to minimize our exposure to pesticides, uh, herbicides, and other toxic uh, chemicals that we get from our food. So um, every year, okay, so every year the USDA tests the conventionally farmed produce in the United States to gauge the levels of toxicity, gauge the levels of pesticides and herbicides that exist in the conventionally farmed fruits and vegetables. Now keep in mind, when I say conventionally farmed, that means non-organic. Um, and about 70% of the produce that is grown or rather that is sold in the United States tests positive for pesticides. Now, it is, I think it's pretty universally agreed upon that the healthiest approach to nutrition is a plant-based uh, method of eating. Now, by plant-based, I don't necessarily mean vegan, I don't necessarily mean vegetarian, but I mean really focusing on taking in a high volume and a high quality and a high diversity of plants, uh, fruits and veggies and nuts and seeds and so on and so forth. That is generally accepted to be the healthiest method of nutrition. I don't think that's very controversial. There is actually a, uh, I guess I'll call it a style or a method of eating called um, the carnivore style which is made up entirely of animal products because their theory is that they can derive all of the nutrients that they need from animal products alone by eating organ meats and so on and so forth. We're going to ignore that and we're going to go with the collective wisdom that, you know, that I think accurately um, comes to the conclusion that the healthiest way to approach your nutrition is to make sure that you're taking in a high volume of plants. Now, each year the USDA tests the produce that is sold in the United States to measure for levels of pesticides and other toxins. And the EWG, the Environmental Working Group, analyzes the data, uh, reviews the tests that are done by the USDA to determine which fruits and vegetables show the highest load of pesticides, you know, which, which fruits and vegetables seem to be the most affected by pesticides and which are the cleanest. Now, keep in mind, again, we're talking about conventionally grown produce, not organic produce. Um, so the EWG every year comes out with a list of the the dirty dozen, which is which which makes up the the 12 plants, the 12 fruits and vegetables that seem to be the uh, that that show the highest loads of pesticides, and the clean 15, which uh, show the the lowest residuals of um, pesticides. What I think is interesting is that when they do the tests on these fruits and veggies, they're testing them in the form that they are most likely to be in when they are eaten. So these tests take place after the food has been rinsed or after it has been peeled. So if foods tend to be peeled before eaten, then the USDA is, is, USDA is, is testing these fruits and veggies after they've been peeled and washed. So, you know, it would be a little bit more, it would make a little bit more sense that these fruits and veggies were showing uh, a lot of pesticide residue 
if they were simply just plucked out of the off of the farm and tested prior to being washed or peeled. But these tests are actually done after the fruits and veggies are washed and or peeled. So why should we care about this? Well, because pesticides are toxic and herbicides are toxic and uh, increased levels, increased, increased blood levels of pesticides have been linked to certain cancers, to nervous system disorders, to immune system uh, disruption, to reproductive system issues, even to decreased fertility. And our bodies are really not, um, they're not really prepared to protect us from these toxins because all of the detoxification systems that we have biologically evolved millions of years ago and they did not evolve to be able to address industrialized chemicals. So we struggle and we are, we are highly affected by these pesticides because our bodies are really just not, did not develop coping me mechanisms for these industrialized uh, chemicals. And there is a, a, a bioaccumulation that takes place. So in other words, the, these, these toxins build up more and more and more in our body. Children are especially vulnerable because their immune systems and their nervous systems are still developing. And then we should also take into consideration the workers, you know, the people who are actually working on the farms, they're being exposed to these pesticides, these toxins daily, and they're being exposed to high levels of these um, pesticides on a daily basis. And these are the ones, these are the people that actually experience like acute poisoning. And there have actually been some uh, recent lawsuits over the last uh, several years that have resulted in judgments of over $2 billion against Monsanto. Monsanto uh, owns the patent for glyphosate or Roundup. And there have been some enormous judgments rendered from class action suits against Monsanto um, because of poisoning due to glyphosate. At this point, it's kind of questionable as to whether or not these judgments will stand um, because the government, the U.S. government swears up and down that these that, that glyphosate is not a carcinogen. And so we'll see what happens ultimately with those lawsuits. But um, people are being poisoned and it's showing up. And, and actually, there are judgments that are beginning to be rendered in class action lawsuits. So um, let's take a look at the dirty dozen first. So these are the 12 fruits and veggies that are the most highly impacted and affected by pesticides. And they are strawberries, spinach, and up to 1.8 as much pesticide or as many pesticides than any other crop except for kale shows up in spinach. So spinach tests very high on the list. So does kale. Um, kale shows up to 18 different types of pesticides. And I find it interesting because in this day and age when people are really trying to improve their nutrition, a lot of people are eating kale. Kale is kind of like the, um, you know, one of the, one of the popular trendy vegetables to eat right now. And for good reason, because it's very nutritious, but it turns out that conventionally grown kale is one of the top offenders when it comes to how much pesticide shows up in the testing for it. Number four, nectarines. Then it goes apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, and potatoes. So again, the dirty dozen includes strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, and potatoes. So now let's take a look at the clean 15. These are the 15 fruits and vegetables that are conventionally farmed and that show the least amount of pesticides in them. As a matter of fact, I think it's, it's like 70% of these fruits and veggies show no pesticides at all. And so the clean 15 are avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas, eggplant, asparagus, cauliflower, cantaloupes, broccoli, mushrooms, cabbage, honeydew, and kiwi. So when you take, at that, take a look at the list of the Clean 15, I think what's interesting to note 
is that a number of these fruits and veggies have thick rinds or coverings on them. So avocados, pineapples, um, even uh, uh, cantaloupes, sweet peas don't have a hard rind, but they come in the pod, um, honeydew and kiwi. So all of those fruits have a pretty significant protective covering around them, which probably kind of um, uh, protects them from the pesticides. And then a number of the other ones that are on this list are, are grown underground. So you've got, uh, and then actually sweet corn comes with the covering as well on it, the husk um, on it. You have um, asparagus, which is grown underground, onions. Um, so you have a lot of these cleaner fruits and vegetables that have thick coverings and rinds on them that protect them from the pesticides. So again, the Clean 15 are avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas, eggplant, asparagus, cauliflower, cantaloupes, broccoli, mushrooms, cabbage, honeydew, and kiwi. So if you typically shop for conventionally farmed fruits and veggies, you'd be better served focusing on the Clean 15 because they test much lower when it comes to pesticides and or they actually, about 70% of these fruits and veggies show no pesticides at all. So um, information is important. You know, knowing these things um, is important so that you can make informed decisions when you're shopping. Now, what are the, what are the things that you can do to uh, limit your exposure to these sorts of pesticides? Um, well, obviously, you can avoid the, the foods that are on the Dirty Dozen list and focus on the ones that are on the Clean 15, but that doesn't seem like a very good solution because, man, a lot of the items on the Dirty Dozen list are good. They're healthy for you. Um, they have, you know, they're, they're, they're nutrient dense. So uh, better, a better option to avoiding eating those foods altogether is to obviously shop organic. Um, when you shop for organic food, they're going to show, for the most part, unless they are farmed in an area that's close to conventionally farmed um, plants in which the, the wind might carry some of the pesticides onto them, you're going to find that organic and uh, fruits and veggies are going to have either no signs of any sort of pesticide or very, very low. So obviously, in addition to uh, kind of avoiding, you know, so first step would be avoid the conventionally farmed fruits and veggies and focus on organic. Now, organic is obviously more expensive. So Consumer Reports recommends Trader Joe's, Wegmans, Costco, and Sprouts for the best overall prices when it comes to um, organic produce. Um, the other thing that you can do if you're, if, if, you know, listen, money's tight, especially right now with the economic uncertainty. So if shopping for all organic fruits and vegetables is not something that you feel is within your budget right now, and you need to continue to buy the conventionally grown fruits and vegetables, you should be washing it. Wash those fruits and veggies. Now, Consumer Reports, and I think this is really important, also recommends if you're if you're going to be buying the um, well, actually, Alina is asking right now, what are your thoughts on soaking fruits and veg in, in vinegar? Soaking fruits and veg and vegetables in vinegar is a good idea. But what what um, Consumer Reports found is that if you soak conventionally farmed fruits and veggies in a mixture of um, baking soda and water for 12 to 15 minutes, it pretty much removes all residue when it comes to pesticides. So vinegar is good, soap and water would be good, but the best alternative when you're cleaning your fruits and veggies would be to mix, to, uh, to wash them in a mixture of um, water and baking soda. And they recommend a ratio of two cups of water to one teaspoon of baking soda for up to 12 to 15 minutes. And that should remove all of the pesticides. If you are on a budget, you're not able to shop for organic produce, but you don't want to be taking in a high 
pesticide load. Um, make sure that you, you wash them in uh, water and baking soda. So interestingly enough, the EWG you know, still recommends eating your fruits and veggies no matter what. So even if you're eating the ones that are on the dirty dozen list, the benefits of the nutrition that you get from fruits and vegetables outweighs the potential risks, uh, you know, and the potential harms of ingesting these pesticides. So even though there are, you know, even though 70% of the produce that we sell in the United States contains uh, pesticides of varying levels, the EWG says you should eat your fruits and veggies anyway. Um, but again, if you're, if you're going to buy the conventionally farmed stuff, make sure you soak it in uh, baking soda and water. So that's really it. The whole purpose today is to pay attention to what you eat. Pay attention to what you buy. Um, if you are following a plant-based approach to nutrition, which I think is a smart thing to do, then the quality of the plants that you're taking in matters. So if you can buy organic, buy organic. If you're not able to buy organic, make sure that you are cleaning the conventionally farmed veggies so that you are not exposing your body to high levels of pesticides because they, you know, pesticides are linked to a variety of different health issues that are significant. These are chemicals. These are toxins. They're going to have a biological effect on your body. So protect yourself. That's it. That's it for the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. I hope this was informative for you. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything. Make sure you eat your fruits and veggies. Make sure you clean them as needed. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to be uh, at 12 o'clock doing a discussion with Maddie about the vagus nerve and, and what it is, why it matters, um, why should, you should be paying attention to, uh, to uh, vagal tone and... and um, optimal uh, vagus nerve function. And uh, so it's, it'll be worth tuning in tomorrow at noon. Outside of that, have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below.